I started the harp at the age of 30, and I started hearing about Dorothy Ashby first from my second teacher, and it was Stephanie Kaufman, who's now Stephanie Kaufman Osborne. And in the midst of, of getting a whole eye and hand coordination around it, she told me about Dorothy, she says, and she said to me that, uh, and I'm sorry to hear about the, the loss of Dorothy Ashby. And I didn't know who Dorothy Ashby was, and I wasn't certain why she was mentioning her to me. So I never made any reference until maybe about three, four years later, I'd moved from Los Angeles to the Bay Area. And I was really wanting to, to move into jazz and still not sure how to do it, but I wanted to hear if someone else was already doing it. And I had heard of a, another woman who's living in Boston now, who used to live here. Her name was Deborah Henson Connor, and she was doing jazz. And I said, hmm, I wonder who else was, was doing it outside of, of Deborah. And so I, I got the chance to hear some Dorothy Ashby. I said, hmm, that's all right. It was a probably a, a CD that was taken from maybe 57. And I want to say she was on Prestige, but I, but I, I, was, I think I'm remissing that. It wasn't in post either. But I want to say it was Prestige that Dorothy was on. I said, I'm really liking this. And it was her very first CD, Dorothy Ashby, The Jazz Harvest. Dorothy Ashby, Roy Haynes, uh, Ed Thigpen were, were on the CD, and Frank West, so they're all on the CD. And so I'm, I'm learning that, and I'm listening to that, and I'm doing my best to, to navigate my way around jazz, and I'm still learning the whole high hand coordination. But then when I got a chance, I really felt like I was starting to get my hand on jazz. I had to sit down and really listen to Dorothy and what she was doing. And then reading liner notes on Dorothy and, and a, a book on, on jazz artists playing various instruments to include strings. And there was a, a, a beautiful write-up on her in that. And I said, I really want to know more about her. But she was gone. By the time I came to the harp, Dorothy had been off the planet maybe about eight or nine years. So she died in 1986, in April of 1986. And I was already... Um, I was doing other work. So I started to read up on Dorothy and, and where she came from, straight out of Michigan, out of Detroit, went to Cass uh, High School where they had a huge harp department. I mean, real harps in the hood, you know? So she's, she's playing harp at, at uh, Cass High School. Then she goes on to Wayne State and is going, decides that she's gonna be an educator. Now, mind you, Dorothy's dad was a guitarist. Her mother was an educator. And I was told that she had a brother that played flute. And when she started to play her harp, her father, who was a jazz guitarist, was teaching her uh, uh, guitar inflections for a harp. I think she also took a little piano, and I heard that she played saxophone as well. Did a little bit of that and chose to fo focus in on, on harp. And it was said that uh, when she went to Wayne State, she said, well, I'm, just, I'm gonna become a music educator like my mom, I'll be an educator. That that first year, she said, no, I'm not. <laughs> you know, she decided she was going to really pursue being a jazz musician. And she, she left Wayne State without a harp because, it, unbeknownst to many people, harps are fairly pricey, you know, but they, they, the schools had them so she could go to school and practice all day long. But I think she raised enough money herself to actually to purchase a harp for herself. And then she went on to play in various clubs. She would actually do... One of the things I, I and my husband have started to do is to actually put on a show herself, get some money together, and invite folks to come out and hear her with the Dorothy Ashby Trio. And she'd get out and play. And I want to say that Frank West saw her, could see, saw what she was trying to do. She had actually uh, sent out, what was it, what was that reel to reel of herself playing? And she had sent it out to a few companies, and they said, No, we're not interested. You know, there are actually rejection letters online of, of her, of her folks saying, We're not interested. But she kept on and she got signed to this label. She did some work with Barry Gordy of Motown, and it was part of that migration of musicians out of Detroit that moved to California. 
it's alleged that Bill Withers discovered her, if you will, discovered her, and that once he introduced her to the Hollywood musical aristocracy, it was on and cracking. She got on with Earth, Wind, and Fire. She she came to California and released 14 LPs in 14 years. So she just was just cranking them out. The, the, the one that seems to be the most famous that a couple of rappers have have um, sampled, Dorothy Ashby, what is it, uh, Afro Harpy, and another one called the Ruby Eye. These seem to be the two that were the, are the most sampled by a number of, of folks. Ruby Eye is really an incredible piece of, of composition by Dorothy. She also played Koto. So on the on the cover you see her dressed in a kimono and the Koto and she's doing her thing and you can see hear her actually playing Koto and she was really, I want to say ahead of her time because she even does spoken word, what we call spoken word here in the Bay Area on the CD. So you get a chance to hear her voice. She sang. Just an incredible person. We if we go back to Detroit before she left Detroit, she actually had a radio show, and I, we, my husband and I were in Detroit, and we found one of the DJs that had that knew her, and I said, do you have anything of Dorothy, any of her recordings, the, the shows where they were recorded? And he said, no, we didn't expect her to die so soon. You know? That's why we have to die. I'm, I'm thankful for my iPhone. I can document everything I do, if, you know, if I want to, then I, and it can, it can live on. So I really enjoy her, her CD in a, in a minor groove, which what's it's called in a minor groove. It's just incredible, beautiful work. Some of it is, is her doing some Cole Porter and, and, and uh, I think I'm trying to remember who Thou Swell is by, but it's from, from the-, the Rogers and Hart. Rod, Rogers and Hart. You heard her take on these particular pieces and then her own original compositions just stunning and inventive and creative and it, it's one one of my one a woman that I stayed with who's also a jazz harpist who is probably Dorothy's contemporary age wise if Dorothy had had lived is a Stella Castellucci. She said she really had that jazz in the gut, didn't she? She played that old gut bucket jazz on her. And that's the thing, you can hear it. You can even on, on, on one of her, I want to say it's the Dorothy Ashby, the jazz harpist, you can hear her humming along with her phrasing, when she's phrasing. I just love that. I, I love what she did and, and how she did it. I, I, I have a little angst about the fact that she's not as well known. What I am seeing though is I have a good friend Brandy Younger, who lives in New York, who plays harp, and Brandy is has seemed to, and who's 25 years my well, no, she's about well, okay, 22 years my my junior. She seems to have embraced Dorothy and has figured out a way to incorporate it in the sounds of where she's come from, with her just being decades younger than myself, and really she and I together. I have to say she has really started to make sure that she's become more well known and I'm doing my best here on this end of the West Coast to make sure that there is a presence. So I always mention her name when folks say, who does jazz on harp? I said, well, Dorothy Ashby did jazz on harp and was very proficient. And there are a number of folks who respond off of her. I would say Deborah Henson kind of who I mentioned earlier, Lori Andrews. I probably really can't say Corky Hale because Corky was already playing about that time, about the same time. And Stella Castellucci was more of a, a contemporary. I'm trying to think of who else. I, I mentioned Lori Andrews. Stella. Oh, Carol Robbins, who actually was Dorothy's student in California. So Dorothy had a few people that spawned off her. I can say primarily Carol. Lori. I, I can say that I can hear some inflections and things that Dorothy did. I can hear it in people's work, and I know that they've been listening just like I listen to Dorothy. When we sit down, at, that's, that's a part of that. We can read the notes, although I don't know if any of her, trans, any work of her works transcribed outside of what I'm doing, preparing to do, but just, you can hear that we, we've all listened to someone. There ain't no shame in that. 
We all listen. We listen to our parents. That's why sometimes if uh, someone calls your mom or dad and you answer the phone, they say, oh, you sound just like yes. And then as we grow, we start to have our own sound. So Dorothy, man, I call her the jazz harp diva. She was just ridiculous, relentless. I, I was told that even up until that those last days when she on the planet, she had cancer. That is, she still played until she just couldn't, you know. That she's great, just great. I have pictures of her on my phone, at least, you know, and on my, on my Facebook and even in my website, I have pictures of her and just. And I like to listen to her and, and hear what she was saying. And I, and I was listening to Wynton, Wynton Marcellus, who's an incredible musician, educator, blah, 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 band leader, blah, blah, blah. And he talks about not Dorothy, but just listening to artists, and especially when you feel you have an affinity to. You just listen and listen and listen, and you, you imitate, and then you imitate your way out of attempting to be them. You know? as your own tone and sound develops. I just love that. So I, that's what I, I, I love about Dorothy. She's just an incredible being, just her, her music. I didn't know her as a person, but I, I get a chance to just to feel like, what were you saying here? So you have a project where you're bringing Dorothy's music to people in this year, in this summer of 2014. Absolutely, June 21st. 21st, 2014, I am doing a tribute to Dorothy Ashby and, and Frank West, who was a strong collaborator and a strong supporter of that, of uh, Dorothy. And I'm calling the tribute on the corner of West and Ashby, a tribute to, to Frank West and Dorothy Ashby. Very excited about, about this project. It's, it's large for me to do a tribute, excuse me, to someone, but I'm very excited about this possibility of doing a tribute to her on the West Coast. I don't know of a real, real tribute to either of them, but I, I would at least in my own way, I like, I'm looking forward to doing this tribute to them, just in, to honor them, just like everyone else has honored a, a some wonderful, legendary musician. I, I, I believe I spoke on Igor Stravinsky, where folks may do a tribute to him. And someone has done a tribute to Beethoven. How about, you know, there's been a tribute to Duke Ellington. And so how about a tribute to Dorothy Ashby and a tribute to Frank West and a tribute to a number of notable jazz legends who have stepped off, but they left us this beautiful legacy of music to just enjoy, you know, and to study. So you said June 21st? June 21st at Musically Minded Academy in the city of Oakland. And the address is 5770 Broadway. This concert starts at 8 o'clock promptly. If you want to purchase tickets, you, are, you need to talk to me about getting tickets. So you can also, if you'd like to be a sponsor on my concert, destinymohammedproject.com. And you can email me at destinymohammed at destinymohammedproject.com. We love, love to have you there. Well, we look forward to it, Destiny. Thank you so much. Thank you.